think we're really going to do something incredibly amazing together over the next couple of days. We are in the middle of what you might term a democracy recession. After a long period of really democratization around the world that took place uh, after, uh, really for the last 15 years, we have been in a downward trajectory. And every year for the last 16 years, Freedom House has found that there are more countries that have experienced declines in political rights uh, and civil liberties than those have had improvements. Because what we really have not had is a thriving multiracial democracy. And until democracy can operate within the context of profound difference, it is not a democracy worth standing up for. And that is the opportunity that the United States of America has. Some of the best work I see coming out of the fields we fund in are people who are playing with different kinds of um, models, which is almost really, you could say, empathize to organize. Like, how do you, you know, how do you begin to do that kind of deep relation, relational listening that lets you um, not write off um, the enemy, uh, but puts you in proximity to them? You look around the world, uh, the kind of demand for democracy, the demand for rights, whether it's in Belarus, Myanmar, Sudan, Ethiopia, is still quite striking to me. So I think the question is, what are we going to do to trigger another wave of democracy in response to that demand for democracy from the people around the world? The place, I think, where we are falling down the most is on arming citizens to recognize manipulative information. There are very few countries, there are a few, but there are very few that are doing this at scale. There are evidence-based approaches on how to give citizens these tools. People are clamoring for it. What it boils down to for me is what now? For the first time, we will actually be able to see us move the needle in our space. So right now, we were reaching 25% of the world's severely malnourished children. Now, in 2023, by the end of that year, we will be at 50%. 25 to 50% is an enormous gain. Then we have the funding that will actually bring us to 75%. And what is after that? We can actually complete the goal. We can actually end malnutrition. Women get 3% of venture capital dollars. Women of color get less than a percentage. This is a crime. 150,000 foundations that earn a half a trillion dollars a year. And most of them will sit on $1.2 trillion in assets every year. I find that troubling. We are tax shelters. We call ourselves foundations, but we're tax shelters. Business as usual is no longer going to work. Increasingly, I am actually very optimistic. I have seen a change since COVID, where more organizations are funding black and brown-led organizations, global south-led organizations, and even uh, causes that historically were not funded. I mean, the donor and the money should not have the power. The power should be with the people who are make, making the changes on the ground. Because if we want to win on the issues we care about, we need to be funding people who are closest to the issues because they're closest to the right solutions. And giving is joyful, and giving is about relationship, and it is about trust, and it is you know, a, a way to kind of move money in a way that's going to change our world for the better. You can't have bold philanthropy without trust. These investors fund me to fail. Because the more I fail, the closer and faster I get to the winning solution. Let's do that. Let's give our communities a chance to fail and fail fast as opposed to putting on the, the tap dance and the show and pretending like everything's great right and here's my impact and here's what you want to see in terms of the return on your investment. Let us be in trust-filled relationships so we can be honest. Things aren't working and here's what I'm going to do differently. Figure out how you can, at a personal level, share power. And we, we can talk a lot about other things, but one thing that I just wanted to share about what we do is that we believe that People, organizations, and movements go through cycles. And, uh, and their leadership goes through cycles, goes through beginnings, middles, and ends. And we think a good metaphor to understand is seasonality, that people's leadership go through winters. Then they, internal times, they go to spring, times of experimentation. They go to summer, time of high maximization, and they go to fall where they harvest what that cycle has been about, and they go back to winter. We think leaders go through four to six year cycles, and we think movements go through cycles that are five to 15 years long. 
doing the right thing at the right time means funding the right thing at the right time. If you don't know who you are and what's your role mm. in social change, then you're always going to be projecting your insecurity about your role to others. Move the most money you can to the people and organizations that you care about uh, with the greatest amount of ease. If you're gonna do this, time is of the essence. The gift of working in philanthropy is the gift of experimentation. Mm -hmm. It's the gift of the bet. It's the gift of the try. It's the gift of meeting a person, being in a place, watching an organization, and feeling like, oh yeah, there's like something that can happen here. Soy mujer Waurani, leader, madre, defensora de la Amazonica. I am a Waurani woman, a leader, a mother, and a defender of the Amazon. Para que deben respetar el toma de decisiones en nuestro territorio, debe ser nuestra decisión, no el gobierno, no misionero, no gente de otro lugar que vienen a imponer en nuestro territorio. And we've come together to say that what happens in our lands and to our lives is our decision as indigenous peoples. It's not the government's decision. It's not the company's decision. It's not the decision of other NGOs or organizations. Nosotros como pueblos indígenas en todo el mundo estamos primera fila. Es una clave de solución y de tener cambio climático. Across the world, indigenous peoples are on the front lines. We are the front, first line of defense against climate change. My message for you is trust indigenous peoples. Listen to indigenous peoples. We've been doing this. We've been fighting this fight for thousands of years. And so I ask you to join together with us. Don't expect indigenous peoples to do this fight on our own. Um, we're up against the mightiest threats you can imagine. We're up against an entire global capitalist system that seeks to destroy this planet. We need support. We need you to join with us. People are yearning to do something. They want to do something. And so we are in a position, I think, to help other people and ourselves show people what they can do and give them the tools to make a difference and an impact. Y muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much.